Finally, the long-awaited packing video. Oh, do I call this a vlog? But it's not really a vlog. I'm just showing you guys the stuff that I did preparing to mail out my first February rewards, Patreon rewards. First off, I want to thank all of you guys who showed me support with my first month. I was feeling very nervous in the beginning, wondering if anyone would even be remotely interested in getting these stickers. So thank you for your support, it really means a lot to me. So by the time this video is out, I should be preparing the April team. These are February's rewards and these are March's rewards. March's? The March rewards. Link to my Patreon in the description. Yeah, so for making stickers, I had to make a lot of preparations. Honestly, planning for this reminded me about the time that I first started making these videos. Cause back then, when I first started off, I didn't have a routine. I didn't know where to start from, how to lip sync, how to write scripts. Like when do I even edit the audio? Just how to make a 2D video on its own. Yeah, so I kinda had the same feeling with this. Like what do I do first? Buy the stamps? Weigh the envelope? And then buy the stamps? What do I use to pack it in the first place to prevent any damage during shipping. So lots of experimenting, lots of oopsie purchases, oopsie stickers. I wasted a lot of sticker paper. And I did invest a lot of money on things that would help me in the long run. Yeah, so the first thing on my list was to buy a new table for my packing space. I bought this 140 centimeter wide table, which I also plan to use as a backdrop for when I take product shots. Put it together and voila! I then ordered this digital scale to weigh the envelopes and also to weigh my merch stuff in the future. But I feel like I got scammed because this is too small. It looked big in the picture, okay, but I just saw the reviews, people saying like, oh, you know, it, it, it works and blah blah blah, but then when I got it, it looked so small. So I decided to get another one. I'll use the small one for kitchen purposes if I ever do anything in the kitchen. Yeah, I got this big boy, okay, just wide enough to weigh my envelopes. Because you guys know I have anxiety, right? So I don't want to go to the post office, have them wait for me, and then tell me like, how much the rate is for the stamps that I have to put. I'll most probably panic if I have to do stuff then and there. Like, I can't do that. I must be prepared beforehand. I need time to double, triple check to make sure everything is the way that it should be. Next, I bought envelopes. Can't determine the weight if I don't have envelopes. I did initially plan to use this thick card body envelopes, but then I realized that the glitter sheets, they are actually very sturdy on their own. So I won't have to worry about them getting bent. I'll just insert a thicker backing card for extra support. And I think I bought around 500 pieces of this because it was on sale and it was a whole set and then next we have these cute bags isn't it adorable i bought this from shopee but i actually know the manufacturer in china through alibaba so hopefully as my sticker pin club grows i can start customizing these bags these look cute but i want them to be special i want them to be from me like like drawn by me and you can reuse them you want to send cards or stuff for the holidays don't throw them away you can use them i plan to use different designs for each month next i bought some storage stuff for the stickers because the ones that I bought before this were too small, all of them. Yeah, it didn't fit. <sighs> but I feel like for some reason the universe does not want me to find the proper container size for the sticker sheets. For the printing part, I had to buy new ink bottles because I accidentally bought fakes. Yes, beware if you're a Canon user. I decided to buy from Shopee for convenience sake. I wasn't searching for anything cheap like that. I just went on Shopee for convenience sake. And this seller marketed it as original. I read the reviews, people were saying, oh yeah, it's like the original, blah blah blah. But as soon as I got them, they looked different from the original ones that I bought. And I did some research and found out that they were fakes. They were dupes. And using fakes like this can clog the print head, so it's better to use the original. I just wish that I didn't pay the original price for these fakes. Like, hey, if I was buying a fake one, you could have at least made it cheaper. But you learn from your mistakes, right? This time I searched for an authorized Canon dealer in Malaysia from their website, and then I bought the ink bottles from that store's Shopee store. I did get a slight scare in the beginning, thinking that these were fakes. But one way to tell whether it's fake or original is that there is no seal inside. Original Canon ink bottles can't be opened here. There is no seal to remove. But the fakes actually have a seal. So if you ever accidentally purchase these ink bottles and you have to open it up to remove a seal, then you've most probably purchased a fake. It's also easier to squeeze the original bottles compared to the fakes.
Now my glitter sheets and holographic sheets are made using cold lamination. So the cold lamination sheets I purchased, they come in rolls and in order to cut them according to the paper size, I bought this big ass paper cutter. It was quite expensive compared to the other ones on Shopee but I want good quality and long lasting rather than the cheap ones where the blades get dull after a few uses. Before this, I had been using my tiny paw cutter for the test ones that you saw in the video and that was a lot of work. This paper cutter is a lifesaver. I'd love to buy the other big ass one that I've seen on social media but that's like 400 ringgit. One day, one day when my sticker pin club has grown. So I used this to cut the lamination sheets Now the thing with cold lamination is that you don't need a laminator, you can actually just apply it with a card or a ruler. But a few problems that I faced using a card or a ruler are these air bubbles. The goddamn air bubbles. If you don't do it properly in one swoop, this is what you get. Also it's very important to ensure that the surface of the paper is clear of any dust before laminating because once you've laminated it, look at this speck of dirt. I just can't. So I bought this laminator to help me out. It has cold laminating functions. I don't need to use the hot laminating one. And I fit it in twice just to be sure. This is what makes my stickers waterproof and long lasting. And off they go to get cut. Now cutting die cut stickers is stress free for me. It's the kiss cut stickers. You know these sticker sheets where I have to make sure that the blade is not sharp enough to completely remove the sticker from the paper. It just needs to cut the front top layer of the sticker sheet while still keeping the bag intact. So that's the hard part, having to adjust the blade. The glitter and holographic cold lamination sheets make the stickers thick and sturdy. So the force for these sheets must be two times harder compared to the cutting strength of the planner sheets. Oh, so stressful. But the end product is gorgeous. Right? Like, I love these stickers. I hope you guys love them as much as I love them. But then something happened. My printer started acting up, so I bought a new one. I actually bought the first one through Carousel, so it's a second-hand printer. The dude sold it to me for 350 ringgit, and back then I didn't know much about printers, but now I know why it was so cheap. Because the dude bought it in 2020, and he never used it much. So Canon printheads get clocked if you don't use it for like a week. Now imagine months, years. I didn't know that I was going to face hell with printheads getting clogged easily and wasting ink through ink flushes. So that's why I decided to buy a brand new one for 679 ringgit because after using the second hand printer, I now know my stuff. I'm not throwing away the second hand printer, I'll just replace the toner and printheads when my sticker club has grown and I need two printers. Now the Wi-Fi on that one was not working, so it was beautiful to use this printer without having to connect it to my PC with wires because my workspace is already crowded. And look, the stamps arrived! So I ordered stamps from Post Malaysia's online store because I heard that they're always out of 5 ringgit stamps when you go to whichever branch. That's why whenever a Malaysian sends airmail stuff to like overseas, the letter is always full of stamps because they don't have 5 ringgit stamps. And like I said, I must be prepared. So if I'm not gonna get 5 ringgit stamps when I go to the branch, I'm just gonna buy them online. So I bought stamps online and I also kind of went shopping because my patrons are from the US, the UK, Canada and Norway and I want this to be a special way to share Malaysian culture with everyone because I still feel like to this day people don't know much about Malaysia. You have heard of Singapore, okay? Singapore used to be a part of Malaysia. We kicked them out. And then you've heard of Thailand. You've heard of the Philippines. You've heard of Indonesia. But you have never heard of Malaysia, the one that's right in the middle, like right there. Yeah, so I want to use this as a special chance to share Malaysian culture with everyone. So I will be using different stamp designs every month. So I bought this traditional headdress series of an indigenous tribe in Malaysia, the Iban people, the Kadazan people, and Orang Ulu. And then these kitty cat ones. I also bought a few 2 ringgit and 10 cent stamps from a Shopee seller because I couldn't find these on Post Malaysia's website. Now you must be like, um... What are you doing, Josh? I need them to be ready and in proper condition so that on the day that I start packing these rewards, I won't accidentally tear them. Okay, I need to be prepared. Stop judging me. But I really like this type of like repetitive tasks. Like you have no idea about the amount of joy I experienced while I was doing this. Pure happiness. I even just placed an order for March rewards stamps and I can't wait to sit down and do this all over again. Is it weird? I just love this kind of packing and stamping stuff. I don't know why. Bye. 
Now the thank you cards kind of came out messed up. The printing was not properly aligned, cutting job was crappy since it was manual. But the main purpose is for it to act as a backing card to prevent the stickers from getting bent. So you can throw this away and expect nicer ones in the coming months, okay? And today is the day, the day that I start packing everything. First, gotta sanitize my hands. I always wonder if people's hands are clean whenever they're handling my orders and stuff. So if you're like me, let me assure you I'm a hand sanitizer freak. I always sanitize my hands before handling your sticker stuff. Now you have no idea how many times I double, triple, quadruple check the addresses and pledges of each patron. I've practically memorized your names and where you live because of the sheer amount of times I double, triple check. Cause I'm just scared of making mistakes. Like, like it's in my head, all of your names. Brianna, Loretta, Maggie, Rowan, Andreas. For the stamps, I actually have a wet sponge right at the corner. I don't know if you guys can see. I use that to paste the stamps. So don't worry, I don't lick them. Do people even lick stamps these days? Now for the tracking, bless this Shopee seller's soul. So I found this tracking for a much cheaper price on Shopee. Apparently this person stopped sending their stuff overseas so they were selling their tracking that they purchased and this kind soul told me what to do with it. Cause I didn't specifically ask the post office staff in January. I will ask for every single instruction. Like what angle should I paste it at? You know, I'm that kind of person. So I don't want to annoy people with all my questions. That's why I don't ask every question that I have. But because of that, I was panicking and unsure. So when I reached out to this seller, just, just like trying to ask them like, um, so like, do I just paste this on my letter, blah, blah, blah. They told me this. And we are off to the post office. I was so nervous. Cause like doing something for the first time for a person with anxiety is exhausting. It is mentally exhausting. I kept thinking of all the possible obstacles that I might face trying to mail these stickers. Like what if the rate increased and I need more stamps, which means I'll have to paste them then and there. But I can't function if you just give me a task then and there. I need time to properly understand what I'm doing and I need space. And I won't be able to double, triple, quadruple check if I have to do things then and there or what if I wasn't supposed to paste the tracking on my own and I had to let them do it or what if they don't allow brown envelopes and I have to go back buy white envelopes remove the stamps and do this thing all over again Yeah, 
yeah, so um, looks like I did everything right. Whew. The relief that washed over me when everything went smooth, now I won't feel as nervous when meeting the next Patreon rewards because I have this first-hand experience. Yeah, I was so relieved. I walked out of the post office and then I took a seat outside because of how relieved I felt just to sit down and be like, whew, it's done. Those who don't have anxiety might be confused because they're like, Josh, you just handed the envelopes over the counter? But those with anxiety, you know how mentally exhausting it is to do something for the first time and to overthink the way that I overthink. And that's it with packing February's rewards. Once again, thank you to my patrons of February for making me happy. I am so excited to pack the March rewards and future rewards. So the link to my Patreon will be in the description down below and I'll see you when I see you.